These are real Madagascar bullseye moths. Wow, incredible. And today I will show you how to breed them in five simple steps. This is a cool species of moth that is suitable for beginners. Both the moths and their caterpillars are spectacular. Let me explain the first step to you. And I am a moth expert that will teach you how to raise them in just a few steps. Step number one. Step number one, the eggs. The eggs are easily incubated in petri dishes, but any type of airtight container works. Keep them on room temperature. 21 degrees Celsius is more than enough, although they do appreciate more warmth if you can provide it. It takes just about two weeks for the eggs to hatch. You don't really need to do anything except wait and leave them alone. Once you see the baby caterpillars coming out, be careful. They are vulnerable and squishy. These hungry babies need food quickly, but that's going to be the next step. Good job, step number two. Step two, baby caterpillars. Here are our babies. They've just been born and they need food immediately. First, you need to collect twigs with leaves on them of the types of plants they like to eat. This species can eat many types of plants. Good suggestions are oleander, willow, privet, cherry, common ivy, sweet gum, eucalyptus, sumac, pepper tree, lilac, mango, guava. The actual list of plants they can eat is much bigger. These are just some of the best suggestions. Then grab a small plastic box and add a layer of paper towels on the bottom that absorbs excess moisture and makes it easy to clean. Then add some of the branches on top of it. Next, transfer the caterpillars into the box. I suggest using a paintbrush because at this point they are very vulnerable, small and squishy. If you use your fingers for example, you may end up accidentally squishing them. Place all the caterpillars in your box. Over time, they will begin to feed and grow bigger. But at one point, they will become too big to live in a plastic box. And this brings us to the next stage. Step number three. Step number three, big caterpillars. Next, get yourself a large plastic box and create a large hole in the lid if you can. Then cover it with netting so the insects cannot escape. This creates ventilation and airflow that they need. If your room is humid enough, it's also possible to buy a pop-up cage enclosure to raise them in. It's very important not to overcrowd caterpillars in small containers. So once the caterpillars grow bigger, keep moving them into bigger enclosures. Fill an empty soda can, wine bottle or any other container with tap water. Then add branches of the food plant into the water. This keeps it fresh for several days, like flowers in a vase. Make sure to close the neck of the bottle so the caterpillars cannot crawl in and drown in the water. Next, take the caterpillars and add them to the branches. Here they will free roam for a while and feed on the foliage. Now over time these caterpillars will become extraordinarily beautiful. Slowly but surely the caterpillars are growing bigger and bigger. It takes patience. It takes about one and a half to two months before they are fully grown. Currently you are looking at the final life stage. Wow! Right before they spin a cocoon, in fact, one final change happens. The caterpillars can turn pale blue. This unusual form of pre-pupil camouflage is extraordinarily beautiful. It reminds me of a psychedelic experience. And after this, the caterpillar slowly begins spinning silken cocoons. Once the development is finally complete and you did everything correctly, the cocoons have small holes in them with surface ventilation slash drainage holes. The next step is taking care of the cocoons themselves. Step number four. Step four, cocoons. Honestly, taking care of cocoons is nothing but a waiting game. That's what you do. 
you sit and you wait. So, you have raised your first moths to cocoon. How do we incubate the cocoons? It's very easy, you just keep them at room temperature. And what you need is an enclosure like this. This is called a pop-up cage. It, you can fold it, but most importantly it's made from netting. This is really important. Netting is the perfect material for cocoons. The moths have to crawl up. You have to be able to climb and have grip. Don't use glass, don't use plastic. Next, here I have some of the cocoons that we raised. It's not really great to see it right now because indoors the lighting is a bit bad. But as you can see on the bottom I placed a towel. Yeah, the same towel you can use to dry yourself off after a shower. And I take the pupa and I place them in here in the cage. Do it just like that. There you go. And if you keep them warm on room temp for a few months, they will hatch. What you can do is you can keep them humid by spraying with water. There you go. The humidity can help them. If you are a newbie or a beginner, this is the perfect method to incubate them. You don't need to do much else, except wait. Now this can take a long time. Usually the moths, they come out in about a month or two, but I've seen, um, I've seen them stay in the cocoon for like eight months or longer for some reason. It seems intrinsically a bit unpredictable. So there you go. And I'm gonna, you, what you can do is you can wait. You can wait several months. I'm gonna put them in my enclosure, but this is an example of who, how you can hatch your cocoon. Give these new cocoons a new spot. That's right, boys and girls. Let's put them here and see what happens. Just maintain the temperature and moderate humidity. That's all you need, in all honesty. Expect your moths to come out in about two to five months time. Usually they are on the faster side, but in some cases the cocoons can stay dormant for months if they don't happen to like the conditions. It can be a bit random and unpredictable. Humidity and higher temperatures do speed up the development, however, and then the moths will come out. If you make them angry, they do an awesome ice pot display. But there's more of them. Here in the corner is another one of them. But here's even more. We have four of them. That's amazing. Let's get them out of here into some sunlight so I can make nice close-ups and pictures. Oh, step number five. Step number five, the moths themselves. How to take care of them. My God, isn't this incredible? Bull's eye silk moths. These are fantastical creatures. What makes them special is how much they vary. There are brown color forms, but also yellow, orange and gray forms. And in very rare cases, very dark, almost black ones. They have very brightly colored and conspicuous eye spots that really stand out. This is what gives them the name bull's eye moth. And when they are touched, they will do a defensive display where they move their eye spots back and forth in an almost metronomical way. The moths can be kept in pop-up cages made from netting, but even laundry baskets are sufficient for them. Important is that their enclosures are ventilated and have airflow. So how to take care of the moths? Sadly, they only live for about 8 to 15 days. You see, these moths do not have a mouth and they cannot eat. They are doomed to starve. This is pretty normal for species of silk moths, unfortunately. The last thing that's left to do is to make them pair with each other. Now guys, mating this species is very easy and if you follow my channel and you're a fan of my channel and you see my videos, you will know that mating some species of moths in captivity is actually very hard. Not in this case. I'm pretty sure these moths they will mate almost automatically as long as you put them in a dark and warm place. That's about it. And that's what we are going to do. I'm gonna put the light out, go away and check back tomorrow.
pretty sure they're gonna make tonight. Darkness. Really, that's all they need, a dark room. Do you like dark rooms? Actually, don't answer that question. All right, folks, next morning, have our moths mated. Let's take a small look. Antirina Suraka is one of those moths that are extremely easy to mate. Like if you have males and females, it's almost guaranteed that they will hook up. And that's what has happened, of course. So this is a male and a female who are mating. If their abdomens are attached like this, that's how you are sure that yes, they have uh, done the lovemaking last night. So the mating actually happens at night, but the male and female stay together until the next evening. This is another couple of moths that is mating. And yes, that's really all they need. Darkness and preferably a little bit of airflow and ventilation and warmth. They are nocturnal animals that locate each other in the darkness based on smell. That's how simple it is really. After they have mated, females will scatter their eggs all over the enclosure in the form of small round orbs. You can collect these brown little eggs in a plastic container. You can also use a petri dish to incubate them. Almost any type of container will work as long as there are no holes that allow the baby caterpillars to escape. And then you wait about two weeks. After two weeks, the baby caterpillars hatch from their eggs. After that, your life cycle is pretty much completed. Congratulations, we did it. This video was a short version of a very long and big video on my main channel. If you like these type of life cycle videos, and you would like to see something even more detailed and extensive, then look for moth cycles on my channel. These are very elaborate breeding tutorials that last several hours in some cases. Thanks for watching, I will be back soon with more videos.